Do, 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 All right, guys, here is how to make a junkyard refrigerant recovery machine and why you want one and how it works. So, Todd, take it away. What do you got here? 4108 uh, window unit. It was given to me for free. And uh, just to yeah, make a few modifications to it, take out the uh, uh, indoor coil and disconnect the discharge line from the condenser coil and, and disconnect the line going to the, the indoor coil. So you'll have basically two pipes to connect. One refrigerant goes in, one more refrigerant comes out. I leave the condenser coil because it helps cool the refrigerant off and will get it into a tank quicker than without it. There'll be a high temperature gas going in and just expand real quickly. So cooling it off a little bit. So, so you need the condenser coil really because without it, it's going to be too much pressure in the tank? Oh yeah. Well, okay. well not too much pressure, but the little compressor will just have a hard time pedaling that bill like that. Right. So okay. The, the next thing you need is a recovery tank. And we're going to make one out of an empty refrigerant tank. Very, very simple. Okay, so, so far this machine, you said there wasn't an on and off switch. That was one of the things that was bad on it. So you built your own on and off switch there. And then you took off the indoor unit uh, blower fan. And the indoor coil. And the on. indoor coil. Because all you need is the condenser side of this, of yeah, this window I, unit. I took a, <clears throat> excuse me, and put a flare nut on the uh, discharge line coming out of the coil. So it'll be liquid going into the tank. And then uh, the screw, like, you don't have to use a set of gauges like this. You could use regular gauges with hoses. I just did this because it was a leftover set that I wasn't even using anymore. And then uh, you also need to put on a fitting to, uh, I put a check valve here on the, the uh, suction side, only because we plan on using this probably a time or two in the right. near future. So it's a way to shut it off and not let air get in there or moisture or whatever. Right. So. Now what if this, so if you have your machine that you want to get the refrigerant out of is R410A and your window unit is 134A or something, is that, can you use that or no? Well, yeah, you're going to find a window unit of 134A, but if you do come across an R22 unit, um, the compressor is going to use different oils than 410A, so you wouldn't have clean refrigerant that way. Because the oils, oil would contaminate. Yeah, it would be contaminated, and then uh, having a fresh tank like this with just 410A going in it with the same oil, then you don't have oil. You take the refrigerant out of your unit, put it in that tank, and then put it right back. All right, so the machine is made now, but we need to make the tank, right? So that's oh, what well, you're- One more thing I want to point out, that the, I left the filter dryer intact, on the suction line going to the compressor that helps prevent contaminants from the unit and whatever else hoses right. getting into the system. Okay. And um, so the next thing, this tank, what is the story with this tank? Okay, so these are not like the old days. The old days you could re reuse the tanks, but nowadays you can't. So I think it's obviously easy for them to do it. The, uh, Tanks are, are one way. They actually have a flapper right at the top of the tank that is, if you try putting something through here, it closes and doesn't allow you to do so. So what we're going to do is cut the very top of this valve stem off right here, which will allow this to unscrew and come completely out of the way. And then we're going to take a drill bit and shove it down there and drill out the flapper so it'll allow stuff to go back in there. All right, so that's like a uh, check valve or something. Yeah, like a check valve, exactly. Okay. All right, so you're gonna cut your yet your normal uh, pipe cutter here. Yeah, uh, this is steel, so it's gonna take a, a couple of rotations here to be able to cut through it. But I have confidence that you'll do it. All right, so at what point are you cutting it? Where does it have to be on it's this stem here? As high as you can get. As high as you can get, it, huh? Yeah, because okay. it's just a little lip on the edge of this this uh, valve stem here that's holding the valve in. So the higher the better. Okay. And I, I got it all the way up against the valve, so that's as high as you can get. All right, so we'll see. That's going to maybe take a couple minutes, so yep. I'll push pause. But yeah, you're, and then you're going to remove this 
uh, red. Uh, yeah, we'll unscrew it, take it out of there, and then we'll bring over a drill with a bit, and we'll drill out that flapper, and then it'll be a two-way tank. Okay, cool. So I'll push pause for one moment. All right, so we are making some progress here. Todd, what have you done so far? We successfully removed the valve out of the tank so we can get the flapper out of there, which is kind of hard to see, but if you look real closely, you can see it down in there. It almost looks like a toilet flapper. Right. Okay. And That's going to come out or nothing will go back in it. But you said you could drill that out or yeah, no? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to try and pull it out with some needle nose first, but if I can't, we'll just drill it out of there. All right. And uh, make sure the tank is empty before you do any of this. Right. Important safety. Right. Obviously, you know, you, if you uh, have a full R410A, you don't want to lose that. <laughs> you don't want to lose it for the money. You don't want to kill the environment. You don't want to kill yourself. So make sure the tank is good and empty before trying any of this. Yeah, and, and this isn't really designed to uh, as a permanent solution for a recovery tank. It's for when you're in a pinch. Because if you uh, uh, got to be knowing what you're doing, otherwise you might be hurting yourself. Right. Why are we taking it into a customer's house? Right. All right, we got our drill together. We're going to punch a hole through that flapper. Important thing to do is at least lay it on its side to prevent shavings from dropping down in the tank. And then uh, this is just plastic. It hits plastic, drill a hole. That quick, that easy. Tap it out. That's it. All right. No more flapper. And the flapper actually came out. All right, and now the next stage. Then we got to put the valve back in. Okay. Which, which Same valve. Here. The O-ring fits nice and snug. Make sure not to cross thread it. What I'm doing. There we go. Should be very smooth. Yeah, it's gonna be a little snug, but get a little snug coming out. Just make sure you're straight going in. Probably got to use a pair of pliers or something to run it in there with. If you're not as strong as me. There you go. And just make sure it goes down and shuts off. All right. That's it. And now you're going to connect. One more important safety. Remember now, the ring's been cut. That's what holds this valve in here. So if you have refrigerant in here and pressure, and if you want to screw this too far, it'll be like a bottle rocket. Right. Don't unscrew it too far. Just enough to get the gas through. Okay. So, how many revolutions? Uh, well, you only really need one and a half. All right. And you're open to the tank. Okay. So, next thing we're going to do is test it. All right. So, now you're going to use normal gauge set like like uh, you'd use on. Uh, any other unit you're working on. I just have this set up a little bit differently for like display purposes. But just like you would hook up onto your outdoor unit, you want to put this onto the suction side, like you're going to pump the unit down. We have the hose hooked up to the unit on the service port. Normally there's refrigerant lines connected to the unit. This is just a, a practice unit. So your refrigerant lines will be connected on the ends here. This valve, you can go ahead and close it. It doesn't need to be open. But Which valve? Re remains open. The bottom one you can close, the top one remain open. Okay. And uh, then you hook your suction line up from the homemade recovery unit. All right. So when would you need to do this? Well, there's only a few reasons why you would ever have to pull all the refrigerant out. One, if you had a failed component in the refrigerant circuit, in the outdoor unit, that is, that you need to replace, then the refrigerant would have to come out. Uh, two, if you put too much refrigerant in it, you don't know how much is in there anymore, so it's best just to take it out and weigh it, and then you know where you're at, and then weigh the correct amount back in. Uh, or Three, you have uh, a leak somewhere, and you got to fix the leak, so you got to pull the refrigerant out. That's gotcha. The only to do that. Or four, if you were going to demo this out and throw it in the junkyard. Well, yeah. I, I, you you want to keep the refrigerant, but you also, it's extremely bad for the environment to have this 
in the junkyard, maybe floating well, that, refrigerant, that's floating out some. Aren't expensive right down the road. So right so it's, it's like save save money and save the environment by pulling yeah. it pulling it out before you demo it out yeah, so uh, all right show time yeah. i hope it works <laughs> let's hope so It's not going to be super fast, but most recovery machines are, you know, right. the smaller ones, they, they take a while, so you're just going to watch this gauge until it gets down close to zero. So, so this compressor is smaller than your unit here probably, right? This is probably yeah, 9,000 BTU. I and think, yeah, it's like 9,000 or something. All right. Right. But, I mean, it'll still recover it. It'll just take a few more minutes. And it'll generate a lot of pressure to push the refrigerator into the tank, too, when the time comes. So, any other questions while we're waiting for this? Well, one? I'll push pause. Um, but is it moving at all yet, or no? Oh, yeah, it's moved a little bit. Okay. I'll push pause, and we'll come back here momentarily. All right, it was user error. This uh, this wasn't in line here, so now everything is getting Valve sucked in. Open. Everything everything's working pretty well here when all the valves are indeed open. So do you indeed do add a check valve? Make sure you open it when you turn it on. Yeah. So the moral of that story is, so you put a check valve on there. Make sure you open it before you uh, start all this. But this is doing a lot of whistling here. Why is that whistling while the refrigerant comes out of there? Pushing gas quickly through the small opening. Right. Pushing gas through a small opening. It's going to whistle. But it's working. All right. Now I'll push pause for the last uh, for the next 20 seconds. Hello. We're back. All right. Take a look at this gauge. You'll see that it's down by zero, which means we have successfully pulled all of the refrigerant out of that unit and put it in that tank. Shut the valve. You can see it's with a negative on it. Shut these valves. So you were saying that this would be much higher if we didn't have this condenser here, right? Correct. It would be hot gas going in that tank and it would build a lot of pressure. So it would take longer and in, in, uh, both take longer and be um, higher pressure without the much keeping the condenser pressure. on here. Yeah, so. much higher. Right now, we just put it in there in liquid form. So, there it is. Close the valve. You can have a little bit left over in the hoses. It'll spew out, but you know, you're talking minuscule, or excuse me, uh, de minimis. De minimis amount. D here. All right, so in conclusion? In conclusion, if you're ever out 250 miles from town, and you have to recover some refrigerant. In your car, maybe. Yeah, or you could do it in a, for a car one, too. But you know how to make a recovery machine out of an old window unit and a recovery tank out of an old refrigerant tank. But other than that, don't try this at home, Mom, because uh, this is evil Knievel type stuff here, right? <laughs> yeah, so. we don't want uh, anybody getting hurt. So. All right. This is just a, one of our ideas. All right, thank you.